everyone, it's Vanessa. Welcome back to my channel. Today I wanted to wrap up four more things that I've read and a lot of them are kind of not very happy reads. They're pretty hard reads. Um, so I think I'm going to start with those and then I'm going to end with what I thought about Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone. This is the first time that I've reread it and the first time that I've listened to it on audiobook and the first time that I saw the illustrated edition. So lots to talk about. I'll get started by talking about Mishadra by Yasmin Omar Atta. This is a graphic novel based on the author's life facing epilepsy and seizures that are brought on by different triggers and that are sometimes hard to manage and causes him to neglect um, both the relationships in his life and his schoolwork as well. I think this book is definitely worthy of discussion and I've never read a book that featured a main character that faces epilepsy before so that's something completely new for me. I also really enjoyed the art in this book and kind of the vibrancy that you see in the colors and that is kind of like abruptly interspersed with like very dark and gloomy pages. I think I expected more because of the page count. This is about almost 300 pages and you can tell it's a pretty large book so I kind of expected a little bit more character development than what I got. I felt like we got a lot of repetitive scenes of him going through the same situations of missing out on his schoolwork, his really bad experiences with doctors, and also his conversations with his father and how his father kind of acts like this isn't a thing that actually is happening to his son. While I understand that that's probably because that's the way he experienced it and it's something that comes over and over again, it just didn't allow for a, a narration that made the characters feel full and three-dimensional to me. Also, this book had the best brand new reference. And I sent it to my friend who's obsessed with brand new. So that was my favorite part of this whole graphic novel is this page. Next thing that I want to talk about is The New Jim Crow by Michelle Alexander. This has become pretty much like a modern classic of nonfiction, and the arguments that Alexander makes here are really far-reaching and have kind of reverberated in, into so many different media that I have consumed. Like for example 13th the Netflix documentary is basically this book in documentary format I feel like. I think many books have really shown us how racism and poverty is systemic and institutional and kind of like affects all facets of life. But I think this is the first book that traces in such little amount of pages the ways that it has evolved and the system has evolved from slavery to the convict lease system after the Civil War to Jim Crow and segregation and then to mass incarceration and what we have today. I think it really stunningly shows us how criminality is assigned to protect this new Jim Crow that she is arguing exists today by having it take white prisoners too and how politicians of all backgrounds have accepted and have become tough on crime for such things that are not even as dangerous as going over the speed limit, which is something like we all do. Also, it talks about how civil rights activists and lawyers have really failed this cause because they have taken up other things that are a little bit easier to fight for, um, including like affirmative action, things that you could do very easily by going through the court system and not something of this scale that is very difficult to dismantle. She really takes up and says, you know, civil rights lawyers, if you really believe in these things, you should be doing something to stop mass incarceration first and foremost because of the amount of people that it affects and the consequences that it has on black life in America. Noteworthy, thoughtful, and important. Now I understand why this is so revered. And then the last difficult book that I read was Memory Reef by Jasmine Ward. Before I really read this book, I thought it was solely going to focus on those five men that are the reason for this book and really I actually felt that it was more just a general memoir with these five men's tragic deaths to speak more generally about racism and poverty and what it is like to grow up in the South. It was really a memoir about grief and loss and anger about that, about continually being pulled back to a place and just an environment that doesn't seem to be good for anybody that lives in it, um, but still you love it because it is your home. I also thought it was interesting to hear about her father and how her father is not there physically, but he's there emotionally versus her mother who is not there emotionally but is there physically and is such a hard worker and, and how that home life has been so difficult for Ward. Ward is entirely honest about what it's like to grow up in the South and what her experience was like and this does not shy away from talking about alcohol and drugs and adultery and questionable other things that her father has done. All the while I 
I think still remaining very non-judgmental, taking into consideration like each individual person and the pitfalls of their lives in typical ward fashion really brings you into that time and that place with all of your five senses, which is something that I think Ward does very well. So overall, I thought this book was very much worth the experience reading it. And it was also kind of uncanny how similar this book is to Salvage the Bones, I think, in some of the situations that Ward is in, as well as um, kind of some of her main takeaways from growing up in the South. So it was, it's kind of interesting to read this after Salvage the Bones and seeing kind of those similarities pop up. And last but not least, let's leave off on a happier note, right? Um, I read Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone. First time that I read this book was like ninth grade, so it's been a really long time, and I definitely don't have the same kinds of feelings that a lot of people on booktube have about Harry Potter. I still think it's a really great children's series and one that I really enjoyed diving into. I hadn't been in this world in so long. Um, like I knew the general way that the plot was gonna go but I forgot like all the little intricacies that make this book so special and make it so cinematic and clever and sweet. I was listening to the audiobook while I was reading it and looking at the illustrations. It's indicative of a good audiobook when you like continue to try to find household tasks for you to do while you're listening. And that's something that definitely happened while I was reading this book and I finished it in like two days. I just really love the whimsical and entertaining way that JK Rowling writes these characters. I don't really know how I'll go on in the series if I'm going to do it back to back to back or if I'm going to take my time as I'm reading them or if I wait until all of the illustrated editions are published but so far I really enjoyed this first one and I am excited to get to the second one eventually. And that is it for me and this wrap up. Thanks so much for watching and if you've read any of these or would like to read any of these of course let me know in the comments and I'll see you in my next video. Bye bye.